Previously in Spore, Stinky was the most adorable little elephant in the whole wide world. So adorable, in fact, that, upon bumping into a group of plums, she was hired as their promotional ambassador and put to work travelling around spreading the good word of plum kind. It was during this promotional tour that, just by chance, Stinky met the love of her life, Small Paul. Stinky and Paul were perfect for each other. They spent their days frolicking about and savouring every moment they spent in one another's company. It was all going so well. That is, until one fateful day when they stumbled across a gang of poachers. They ran as fast as their little legs would carry them, but in the following scuffle, Stinky and Paul became separated. Paul was abducted and thrown in the back of the poacher's wagon. But before Stinky could go after him, she was hit in the back of the head and knocked unconscious. Stinky awoke to find she was trapped inside of a large metal cage. Where was she? Looking out through the bars, she saw what seemed to be some kind of hunting camp. It all came flooding back to her. The poachers! Paul had been taken! There was no time to lose. She had to find a way out of this place. Thankfully, it seems the poachers hadn't quite accounted for just how small of an elephant Stinky really was and her cage was so big that she could, in fact, just walk out of it. Well, that was easy, but Stinky wasn't out of danger just yet. She was still surrounded by enemies on all sides, and before they could notice she was gone, she would have to make a move. As stealthy as possible, Stinky ran across the encampment to the front gates. Sadly, this time, there was no gap quite big enough for her to fit through. It was no good. Stinky turned and searched around desperately for another way out. But, in the process, she was spotted. The alarm was raised, and a huge chase scene began. Poachers started to fire their muskets left, right and centre. Stinky had to weave in between a barrage of shells. It was pandemonium. Things were looking bleak. One tenacious poacher was hot on her tail, and it appeared she was going to be caught again until... There! Right in the corner of the camp was a small hole in the wall. Stinky ducked through it and out to the other side. Perfect. The poachers were too big to follow and Stinky was free. Which posed the question actually, if these poachers were really all that serious about poaching, surely they should invest in some better security measures. I mean, Stinky wasn't complaining of course because it meant she could escape, but to be honest, it was a bit disappointing. I mean, come on, get a smaller cage at least or something, or maybe invest in some... <coughs> And speaking of security, this video is sponsored by NordVPN. Look, me and your mother and father and guardians have been talking, and I've heard that you've been using the internet unprotected. <laughs> Which means you, my friend, are susceptible to all kinds of viruses. Polio, uh, cholera, the bubonic plague, and worst of all, internet hackers. You fool, you bumbling fool. Thankfully, the good people over at NordVPN are here to save the day. I've been using NordVPN on the odd occasion for sort of the past couple of years now, and it's a really good service, it's very fast, it's very reliable. And to be honest, I'm probably going to start using it more often because recently I actually ended up getting hacked. It's really easy, especially on public Wi-Fi, for people to steal your passwords and your account information, and I guess that must be what happened to me. Someone logged into my Instagram and started posting stories about Elon Musk and Bitcoin, and someone got into my Twitter and started started like promoting boxing events or something. It was very embarrassing and you should make sure it doesn't happen to you because I'm like paranoid as hell now. Using a VPN is the perfect way to make sure that your history isn't being tracked um, and just generally that you're secure like a a pigeon in a bird's nest. And the other added bonus with NordVPN is, of course, that you can essentially teleport yourself dig through the interwebs to any place in the world, which means you've got access to like a million billion more shows and TV series. So yeah, you can get NordVPN right now if you visit the link in the description. That's nordvpn.com forward slash bogboy. NordVPN.com forward slash bogboy. If you sign up using that, there's a 30 day money back guarantee, so it's completely risk free. And yeah, just make sure you're all safe out there this Christmas season. 
thanks very much to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Now come with me as we jump straight back into the 2008 life simulation game, Spore. Bye bye! After thinking for a while about the underwhelming structural integrity of the poacher's base, Stinky remembered she was in a hurry. Jumping into action, she circumnavigated the walls as quickly as possible, but was just agonizingly moments too late. The poacher's wagon careered off towards the horizon, small Paul's distant trumpets fading away as it went. This wasn't over. Stinky would follow that wagon to the ends of the earth if she had to, and, more determined than ever, she made the decision to set out on what was to be a very long journey. Days and days passed, as Stinky ventured onwards across all manner of terrain. She travelled across sweltering hot deserts, dense forests filled with vicious mushroom creatures, wild savannas, dark mires, and barren wastelands. Stinky was unwavering. She would not rest until she saw Paul's adorable little face again. And so, she kept going, and going, and going, until she reached a bit of an impasse. A giant mountain stretched up into the sky before her. Stinky tried her best to climb it, but the surface was much too steep for her tiny short legs. After tumbling all the way back down to the bottom, it was clear she was going to have to bite the bullet and go around. But, as she made to do so, there it was! The poacher's wagon zoomed past her once again. Thank goodness, after all these days of running, Stinky might finally have caught up. However, just as soon as it had appeared, the wagon passed through another large gate and was concealed behind a gigantic wall of ice. As the gate swung shut, Stinky was left with nowhere to go. She had expected to hit a couple of walls on her journey, but not literally. <laughs> She now had two choices, climb over a mountain she couldn't climb, or break through a wall she couldn't break. Was that it then? Was the chase over? But just as she was beginning to fall into despair, Stinky came across a nest of mounting goats. The goats were quite confused as to what an elephant was doing in such a cold and unforgiving place. Stinky explained the whole story, and, taking pity on her, the goats agreed to lead Stinky to a secret mountain pass that only they knew about. This was perfect, Stinky thought as she and the goats scooted their way down the side of a hill on their bums. In her experience, secret pass was essentially another way of saying shortcut, meaning Stinky could reach the other side of the mountain before the poacher's wagon, and then think of a way to save small Paul. For the first time in a while, Stinky was feeling a little optimistic. That is, until she reached the secret pass, and all hopes were immediately dashed. When Stinky had imagined a secret pass, what she hadn't been thinking of was a few planks of wood precariously perched on the side of a cliff. Unfortunately, according to the goats, this was the only way up. And, with that, Stinky began her ascent. She inched her way along the broken walkways, trying her very best not to fall over the edge. As the boards creaked under her feet, and the wind howled in her ears, she considered turning back. But no, small Paul was waiting for her. She could not let him down. Eventually, she reached a section which was completely unpaved, and she had to perform a series of bunny hops to make any progress at all. After a monumental effort, she could at last see the mountain's peak. And, stepping over the final ridge, she stood and gazed out at the snowy plateau before her. To Stinky's surprise, immediately in front of her was some sort of campfire. Hold on, did this mean that other people had made it up here before her, or did it perhaps belong to the goats? Even more pressing, why was the ground littered with so many skeletons? Upon turning around, all of Stinky's questions were answered. Stood behind her, was a giant yeti. It was the size of a small building, maybe even taller, and what's more, it was coming straight towards her. Oh god, run! Run, Stinky! Run for your life! With one giant leap, Stinky sprang back over the side of the mountain and tumbled all the way down to the very, very bottom again. Well, something tells me the giant wall of ice may have been the better option after all. And, having been absolutely scared out of her wits, Stinky was of the same opinion. Whatever was behind that wall had to be better than the prospect of being eaten by a yeti. Or so she thought. 
But as she approached the large wooden gate, what she saw on the other side was not all that much better. It was a whole settlement of mountain bandits. Now it all made sense. Everybody knows that bandits and poachers are practically best friends. Hence the poacher's wagon was granted safe passage around the mountain. Stinky didn't fancy her chances at bartering the same kind of deal. She was going to have to try and sneak through instead. And, plucking up all of her courage, she took a running jump and managed to kind of glitch herself through the gate. Now that she was in, the pressure was on. Her first move was to shuffle her way up a nearby tent, allowing her to scout out the rest of the settlement. From up on a chimney, she thought she spotted something quite strange. It was another huge metal cage, similar to the one she had previously been captured in. Probably an offering from the poachers. Stinky had to help whoever was inside. She snuck her way across the courtyard, using the doorways of nearby buildings for cover. Eventually, she made it across to the cage, and, would you believe it, inside was what seemed to be a baby yeti. Well, to be honest, after her previous experience, Stinky wasn't much fond of yetis, but she knew as well as anyone now how it felt to be captured and locked up. What if that other yeti up on the mountain was his father or something? Perhaps he was up there looking for him, worried sick. Oh fine, Stinky would save the yeti. She informed the baby yeti that the cage he was in was in fact useless, and that if he wanted to get out, all he had to do was walk between the huge gap in the bars. With a little encouragement, the yeti did just that, and now all they had to do was tiptoe back to the entrance and escape. This did not go to plan, as they were immediately spotted by a bandit, and the chase was once again on. Stinky was able to slip back out of the gate with an incredibly impressive flip. Haha, take that you stupid bandit! Oh, no, fair point, you can jump too. This would have been bad news, but upon trying to get back inside the village, the bandit somehow managed to get himself lodged inside of a pillar. And now that he wasn't a threat anymore, with a bit of jiggery pokery, the baby yeti wormed his way free, and Stinky led him back to his mountain home. They headed up the creaky wooden path, and once they reached the top, the baby yeti and his father were reunited. In return for Stinky's heroics, the yeti offered her a favour, for he could see far and wide from the top of his mountain, and as a result, he had spotted exactly where the poachers had driven off to. Stinky asked the yeti to guide her, and, with great joy, he obliged. So they set out travelling once more. Sure, it had been an unconventional journey so far, but she and Paul would be together again soon. She just knew it. Yes, Stinky was on her way. Meanwhile, small Paul found himself on a high platform, surrounded by a crowd of chanting spectators. Rich and twisted men from afar had come to this coliseum carrying vast swathes of gold. At that moment, Paul's number was called. The auctioneer raised his gavel, and the bidding war began.